This lesson is for section 7.3. We're going to be evaluating all six trig functions using more inputs than what we looked at in the last lesson. So we have three different objectives for the day. Our first objective is to be able to derive the unit circle using special right triangles. Now, by understanding where that unit circle comes from, what you're going to be able to do then is very quickly, from memory, construct a unit circle. Um, then we're going to use the unit circle to calculate the trig functions for an angle input. So this is actually going to be done without a calculator. Okay, Okay, so we're going to look a little bit more in depth at our unit circle. Now we already know a few things about our unit circle. We know that it has a radius of 1, which means that the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1 defines our unit circle. And we also know that any point that is on that circle has to satisfy the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, our unit circle is, is going to be composed of a lot of different angle inputs in both degrees and in radians. So I've got pictures here of both in radians and degrees are special angles that we look at in a unit circle. Now we also have to know the corresponding coordinates for those angle inputs. So for example, if I were to look at the sine of 30 degree angle, okay, or sine of a 30 degree angle would be found by using our corresponding y uh, coordinate here, 1 half. Now this is how we're going to evaluate trig functions very quickly without the use of a calculator, and that's through understanding the unit circle here. Now this is everything put together, both our angle measures, right, in radians and degrees, as well as the coordinates. It looks very, very difficult to try to memorize this, right, which is why I'm, I'm saying don't memorize it even though you really do need to know it. Um, but instead, if you understand where these values come from, it's very, very easy to replicate and reproduce this unit circle. So sitting there and trying to memorize every value would be outrageous. Instead, I'm going to give you some tools so, to help you actually understand and replicate this unit circle on your own. Now if we take a look at our unit circle and the special angles that we use in our unit circle, you're going to notice that you have multiples of 30 degrees. Okay, multiples of 30 degrees. You also have multiples of 45 degrees, and it's a little bit redundant to say this, but you also have multiples of 60 degrees here. Now there are repeats, because some multiples of 30 are also multiples of 45 and so on. Um, but these are your basic angles and, and where what those special angles look like. Okay. Now if you look at these numbers, I hope they kind of ring a bell. We're going to be able to derive 30, 60, 90 triangles and 45, 45, 90 triangles to help us understand why the unit circle looks the way it does. Okay, so I'm back on the note sheet right now. What I'm going to do for you next is derive the values on that unit circle very easily using some basic shapes from geometry. So I'm going to start off with a square and with an equilateral triangle, and we're going to see how that relates, the values there, how they can relate to the unit circle so that you're not memorizing so much. So let's start off with this square. Now, in a square, I know some special things about it. I know, one, that all the sides are the exact same, and I know all of the angles are congruent as well, so I have all right angles. Now, I'm going to create a diagonal here, and then I'm going to ignore one of these triangles. So let's just scr scratch that one out here. And I'm going to look at triangle ABD. Now, triangle ABD is isosceles, right, since those two sides are the same. So I know that these angles here, the base angles, must be congruent. So now I have a 45... 45, 90 triangle, okay? Now, if I wanted to solve for any of the side lengths here, I have, um, you know, this value here, let's call that x, must be the same length as side AB. Now, if I wanted to solve for the hypotenuse here, I would set up using Pythagorean theorem that x squared plus x squared is equal to that hypotenuse, let's call it c squared. And if I solved for c, I would square root both sides, I would get positive or negative, and obviously I'll throw out the negative, so I'm just going to look at the positive square root of 2x squared. Now, if I simplify, I end up with x root 2. So my hypotenuse here is x root 2, meaning that in any 45, 45, 90 triangle, so any triangle, I always get the values x, x, x root 2 for a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So please make sure you write that down. This is very important. Okay, next up here is an equilateral triangle, ABC. Now, in this equilateral triangle, I know a few things. One, I know that all the sides are the same. I also know that all the angles are the same, which means that these are all 60 degree angles. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is create an altitude that connects angle A to side BC. So that's going to look like this. 
Okay, and altitude is just perpendicular to the opposite side. Now, when, when I create an altitude in either an isosceles or in an equilateral triangle, I actually end up cutting the base in half. So this is now going to create two congruent triangles, right, by side, side, side. And I'm going to get rid of one of them. I'm just going to ignore this one over here. So I'm only going to focus on the left one here. Now, this is a 30, 60, 90, because when I created that altitude, I also bisected that angle. So now I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, I'm going to um, solve for different sides of this triangle just to give you the ratios in any 30, 60, 90 triangle, but I'm going to call this side length here 2x. Okay, so everywhere I have 2x, 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 right? Now, because I cut this in half, this base in half, this is only x units long. Now, if I want to solve for this segment, the altitude here, I would use Pythagorean theorem, and I would have x squared plus, let's call that b squared, is equal to 2x squared. Now to solve for b, I would have b squared is equal to negative x squared plus 4x squared. Now solving here, I have 4, 4 squared is equal to 3x squared. Taking the square root of both sides, I do get a negative, but I'm going to throw that one out. So I have b is equal to the square root of 3x squared, which is x root 3. So therefore, in any 30, 60, 90 triangle, okay, so let's draw this one a little bit carefully. Opposite the 30 degree side, let's call that x. Uh, opposite the 60 degree side, let's call that x root 3. And across from the 90, the hypotenuse, we'll label that as 2x. So this is a general form for any special right triangle in the form 30, 60, 90, okay? And over here, which you should have already written down, this is for any 45, 45, 90 triangle. Now, when we look at the unit circle, we can use these two ideas to help us derive the form, or I'm sorry, the coordinates for that unit circle. Okay, now that we know the basics for our 45, 45, 90 and our 30, 60, 90 triangles, we can use those triangles, because if I just create a, a triangle here, a 30, 60, 90 triangle, with a radius of 1, which means that this hypotenuse here is 1, I now can get the y value here, this side length here, and this side length, which would correspond to my x and my y coordinate. Okay. Now what we're going to do is focus specifically on the first quadrant, because really if you, if you take a look at the unit circle values here, you can use symmetry and reflections in order to get the other values. So if you look at pi over 6, for example, we have our x coordinate as uh, root 3 over 2. Well, if I reflect that point over here at 5 pi over 6 radians or 150 degrees, I just have that same exact value except for now I took that positive positive value and made that negative positive. The coordinates here just become symmetric about the y axis, right? So it just takes your x and it changes it to the opposite of x. That's all that it's really going to do. And if I reflect it over the x axis, it takes the xy pair and only changes the y to its opposite, right? So it takes what was in the first quadrant as x comma y and makes it x comma negative y. So you see that one half changing to a negative one half. Um, and it works for every point within this first quadrant. So we're only going to memorize our first quadrant and then use reflection and symmetry after that. Okay, so I've got our, our three main coordinates here. Now, sometimes you'll hear people call this like the small, medium, and large coordinates um, because the outputs here for the y, this is the smallest value in the y, the uh, middle value, and the largest. So um, I, I'm sometimes going to refer to them as small, medium, and large, but that's why they're referred to as those three. Okay, so here are our main um, points. And... The first one, remember, is just a multiple of 30 degrees. So this is technically a 30, 60, 90 triangle. I'm just going to highlight this 30, 60, 90 triangle here that's been formed. And again, this is just pi over 6 radians, which you can convert using our conversion, you know, 30 degrees, multiply that by pi over 180, and you're going to get pi over 6 radians, okay? And I'll show you a better way to do this, but you could just always revert back to our conversion. All right, now that we know that that angle measures 30, let's go back to what we already know about a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And that's written up here, right? Our hypotenuse 
In this case, since it's a unit circle, is a length of one. I'm going to do this in purple. Now if we follow our pattern, that hypotenuse here is twice as long as the short side. Now opposite the 30 degree side should be your short side. So this length here is actually one half. Then we take that one half, we multiply it by root three to get one half times root three, which is root three over two. Now this corresponds to the x value, right? This length here is just your x value, which is root three over two. This segment here corresponds to your y, and that's one half. Okay, so pretty easy to get those values once you understand how 30, 60, 90 triangles are found within that unit circle. Okay, I'm going to erase in just a second, and then I'd like to take a look at our next coordinate, which would be uh, found by using our 45, 45, 90 triangle. So the next angle measure we're going to look at is a 45 degree angle, which is also pi over 4 radians. Okay, now in this case, let's just highlight that triangle. We know that this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. This top measure must be 45 degrees as well. And we also still have a radius of 1. Now if we use this shortcut here to find our side lengths, we're going from our long side to these two sides here. So we're simply going to have to divide by root 2 in order to get this side length. So if I take 1 and I divide that by root 2, um, you might see some people leave that as 1 over root 2. I'm going to rationalize the denominator here. So I'm going to get rid of that root 2 in the denominator to write it in an alternate form. So I'm going to multiply by root 2 over root 2. I'm not sure how many of you guys did this in geometry, um, but we will be doing that in here just so that we can get our general form for, for our first quadrant. Okay, now multiplying by root 2 over root 2 doesn't change this original value because this is simply multiplying by 1. If I multiply across, I get root 2 over 2. So I just rationalize the denominator. That's all that I'm doing is getting this out of the denominator. So now I have uh, an, a rational number as opposed to an irrational number in the denominator. And that same coordinate, um, or that same uh, value is going to be used for this side, which is going to give me my x and my y. Okay, so I have an x and y value of root 2 over 2. And finally, uh, let's do our 30, 60, 90. So I'm going to erase that again. Okay, now we'll look at our next multiple of 30, which is going to be our 60 degree angle here. So if this is a 60 degree angle, and we create a triangle here, we have a right triangle, and that angle measure up at the top is going to be 30 degrees. Now I still have a radius of 1, so our hypotenuse here is 1. And I can find the shortest side of our triangle by cutting that hypotenuse here in half. So across the 30 degree side is 1 half. And again, I'm just using right here this general form for any 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay? And finally, to get the uh, second largest side of the triangle, the side that's opposite the 60 degree angle, I would take 1 half and I would multiply it by root 3 to get root 3 over 2. So I have a coordinate here. My x value is 1 half and my y value is root 3 over 2. Now I find it interesting, um, and this is something that you're going to be using also in the future, but if you look at these points here, uh, they're really the opposite, right? Now that means that the cosine of a 30 degree angle, or cosine of a 30 degree angle, is actually equal to the sine of a 60 degree angle, okay? And the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the cosine of 60 degrees. Um, so that's something that you're going to use in the future, but I just wanted to point that out to you here. Now, now that we actually know all of those values here, we can come over to a unit circle and use our idea of symmetry and reflections. So let's say that we want to look at, again, I'm going to call that, uh, we can also call that low, middle, and high. I've seen it called that too instead of small, medium, and large. It really doesn't matter as long as you understand that there's three distinct points, right? Well, if our if our low point is at root three over two, comma one half, and it's low because our y value here is the lowest, then over on the other side, when we when we uh, reflect that to the other side, the only thing that's going to change is that becomes negative root three over two, and then one half is still positive, right? It's in the second quadrant, so our y value, our y output should still be positive. Um, and then if we want to reflect our me medium or middle point, root 2 over root 2, I'm sorry, root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2, we take that coordinate and we reflect it over here. Again, the only thing that changes is that x value.
Okay. Um, and finally, our large or the high value is going to be uh, one half comma root three over two. Okay, the opposite of this coordinate here. And if we reflect that, we end up with negative one half comma root three over two. Okay. And again, I would just continue to reflect these values here. The only thing that's going to change here now is the, the y coordinate. So I have for the small value here, or the, the low here, is going to be uh, root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. Our middle point here is going to be root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. And then finally, uh, 1 half negative root 3 over 2. Okay, Okay. I'd actually like you guys to uh, fill out the fourth, or third quadrant here on your own. Um, remember, you're reflecting it over the x and the y-axis both, so it's going to change that coordinate. Both are going to be negative, right? Okay, so after you fill that out and check with the key, um, I'm going to show you guys a mnemonic that helps you to memorize the first few points in that unit circle very quickly. So you'll probably hate me for not showing you this right away, um, but it's pretty cool and it helps you to do this quickly. Okay. Now, if you notice that all the coordinates um, in those points have a uh, fraction with a denominator of 2. Okay, so you're going to start with all of the coordinates here being a fraction with a denominator of 2. And then you're going to use the numbers 1, 2, 3, and just go down in your x values. So we're going to start with 1, then 2, then 3. Then for your y values, you're going to start with 3, then 2, then 1. So you're going to go in descending order. After that, you're going to take the square root of your numerators. Okay, if I take the square root of my numerators, the only ones that I have to actually simplify is here, the square root of 1 and the square root of 1 down here, because everything else, um, I would just leave it, right? It's not uh, something I can simplify any further. So uh, if I erase that, I end up with these coordinates here, which actually are the exact same coordinates um, that we found when we derived using our special right triangles. Okay, so you probably hate me because that was so quick. Again, all you have to do is start with a fraction, Everything is going to have a denominator of 2. You're going to go down 1, 2, 3, and then 3, 2, 1, descending, and take the square root of each numerator. Simplify. Obviously, the square root of 1 is just 1. And there you go. Those are your coordinates. Okay, so very quick way for you to uh, reproduce that first quadrant. And then again, use symmetry and reflections to uh, find all of the quadrants. I'm sorry, all of the coordinates in all of the quadrants, okay? All right, the last major topic for today's lesson is talking about reference angles. Now, reference angles are going to help us to evaluate our trig functions very quickly. So let's define them and then go through some examples together. Now, a reference angle associated with any angle theta is an acute angle with a positive measure. So that's important. It's an acute angle with a positive measure um, so that it places it within the first quadrant, basically. But um, it's formed by your x-axis, not the y-axis, and the terminal side of your angle theta. So for example here, I've got an angle measure of 135 degrees. So this would be our theta, OK? Now, our terminal side and the x-axis form another angle here, and that's called your reference angle. So the 45 degree angle here is our reference angle, and in this case, it's in the second quadrant. It would simply be found by taking 180 minus 40, I'm sorry, 135 to get you 45 degrees. So notice that it is um, a positive measure, and it's a 90 degree, or, I mean, it's an acute angle, right? It's smaller than 90 degrees. Um, so that's all that a reference angle is. Now, when you get into even radians, same thing occurs. Now here's an angle in the fourth quadrant, right? Here's our theta. Okay, it's going all the way around into the fourth quadrant. So to find our reference angle here, I would take 2 pi and subtract 5 thirds pi in order to get pi over 3. So this measure here, I guess you could call it the leftover part here, is, is pi over 3. That's our reference angle here. Now at 210 degrees, think about a 210 angle. Well, you go a full 180 degrees, right? And then you're going to go a little bit more to get to that terminal side here which places it, if you take 210 and subtract 180, you're going to get 30 degrees. So the difference here between your x-axis and your terminal side here is simply 30 degrees. Okay, so you, again, only go from the x-axis and the terminal side, not the y-axis. And last up here, here's my theta. Theta is negative pi over 4 degrees. Well, I'm sorry, pi over 4 radians. So if I take the, your uh, x-axis here and the terminal side, that's simply pi over 4. 
okay? Now, the reason why we, we use reference angles is because then we really only have to focus on this first quadrant, right? If we use this idea here, we know that this is 30 or pi over 6, here's 45 degrees or pi over 4, and then 60 degrees or pi over 3. We know these values already, right? We already have these memorized. Instead of having to go all the way around our unit circle, get all those other values, I can simply use reference angles, taking you know the, um, these and then using symmetry. Okay, so let's, let's do some examples where we use that. All right, let's find the sine of negative 135 degrees by first finding its reference angle. So let's visualize where negative 135 degrees and what it looks like. So it's definitely going to go um, clockwise, right? And it's going to end up somewhere in our third quadrant. So it's going to have its terminal side somewhere in, in our third quadrant here. So this is negative 135 degrees. Now, if I look at, I guess, the leftovers, you can call it, this angle measure here is going to be found by taking 180 and subtracting 135 from it because we didn't go a full um, semicircle, right? So that means that this is 45 degrees. So our reference angle is a 45 degree angle. So really what I'm looking at is I'm going to look at the sine of 45 degrees. Okay, so let's take a look at that first quadrant. And you guys can, can quickly develop your um, unit circle in the first few points here. But I do know it's the medium point or the middle point. And that coordinate here is root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. Okay, so that's for the 45 degree angle. So when I want to evaluate the sine of negative 135, I want to look at the sine of 45 degrees. Now the sine of 45 degrees, remember, is just the y output here. So it's your y coordinate, root 2 over 2. So if the sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2, we're really close to finding the sine of negative 135. Now, the only thing you have to consider is whether or not this value is going to be positive or negative. Now, because it's in the third quadrant, everything in the third quadrant has a negative value for your x and your y um, coordinate. So, the sine of negative 135 degrees is negative root 2 over 2. All right? So, that's how you're going to use reference angles to kind of make it a little bit easier to use. Okay, next up, we're going to find the cotangent of 120 degrees by looking at its reference angle. So if I visualize where 120 degrees is, that's going to be somewhere in the second quadrant, right? So here is my terminal side of that angle and the x-axis. So this angle measure here, if theta here is 120, we're going to subtract 180, or I'm sorry, 180 minus 120, and we end up with 60 degrees. So we're looking at a reference angle of 60 degrees. So I'm, I really want to know what the cotangent of 60 degrees is. So I'm going to visualize the unit circle and that high point on the unit circle is that measure for the 60 degrees. So <clears throat> that coordinate is 1 half root 3 over 2. Okay. Now if I want to evaluate cotangent, that's simply the reciprocal of tangent, right? So this is 1 over the tangent of oops, 60 degrees. Okay, 1 over the tangent of 60 degrees. So <coughs> really what I'm doing here is taking the reciprocal. Tangent is y over x, right? Tangent is y over x, so I want to take the reciprocal. So cotangent here should be the x over the y. So I'm going to take the x value here and divide that by the y value. So I'm taking 1 half over root 3 over 2. And if I'm dividing by a fraction, I can say that that's equivalent to multiplying by its reciprocal. And the 2's end up canceling out, leaving me with 1 over root 3. Now, I don't really like this form, so I'm going to rationalize this to get that radical out of the denominator by multiplying by root 3 over root 3. That leaves me on top with root 3. And on the denominator here, I end up with just 3. So the cotangent of 60 degrees is root 3 over 3. Now, for the cotangent of 120 degrees, let's think about what happens to these coordinates. Now, in this um, quadrant here, right, we end up with a negative value for the, the x value and a positive for the y. So if I'm dividing a negative by a positive, really this would be negative 1 half divided by positive root 3 over 2, my end result here should be negative root 3 over 3. So the cotangent of 120 degrees is negative root 3 over 3. Okay, and C here, it says the sine of negative pi over 6. Now, if I want to look at uh, negative pi over 6, it's definitely going to go in a clockwise direction, right? And it's going to end up staying in the fourth quadrant. So here's our terminal side, 
So negative pi over 6 is actually, um, its reference angle is simply pi over 6 radians, right? Now if I look at pi over 6 radians in the first quadrant here of our unit circle, that would be my low point, right? Pi over 6 is the same as 30 degrees. So for pi over 6, I have the coordinate uh, root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. So let's take a look at this and uh, figure out the sine. Well, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, right? Well, I want to know what this, the sine of negative pi over 6 is. So these aren't necessarily equivalent. In fact, because it's in the fourth quadrant, right, it's in the fourth quadrant here, the x value stays the same, but our y value does become its opposite. So the sine of negative pi over 6, then, is negative 1 half. Um, finally, in problem D here, we're going 7 pi over 4 radians. We're finding the cosecant of 7 pi over 4 radians. So let's visualize here first our, our measure. So this is going to go counterclockwise. 7 pi over 4 is not going to go a full revolution, right? Because 2 pi would be 8 pi over 4. So we're, we're stopping short here, okay? And we're, our reference angle then, we can find that by taking that 2 pi and subtracting 7 pi over 4. Remember we just said 8 pi over 4 was 2 pi, so we end up with pi over 4. So that reference angle here is pi over 4 radians. So I'm going to look in the first quadrant, so let me erase here. I'm going to look in the first quadrant at our middle point, pi over 4, on our unit circle. Okay, here's 45 degrees, or pi over 4. And that coordinate is root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. Now, I want to know the cosecant here, which means I'm taking 1 over sine, the reciprocal of sine, right? So the cosecant of theta is equal to 1 over the sine of theta, right? Okay, which means that I'm looking at 1 over uh, the sine of theta here, um, which is just its reciprocal. So let's think about what sine of theta is. The sine of theta is root 2 over 2. But now I'm taking the reciprocal of that, right? 1 over that. Well, the reciprocal of a fraction is just, you know, really easy to find. So it's just 2 over root 2. Okay, so the cosecant right now of pi over 4 radians is 2 over root 2, which again, I don't really like because it's not rationalized, so I'm going to multiply by root 2 over root 2, and I end up with 2 root 2 over 2. That Those 2's will cancel for me, and I'm left with just root 2. So the cosecant of pi over 4 radians is root 2, but I want to know 7 pi over 4 radians, right? Again, if it's in the fourth quadrant, the only value that is changing here is your y output, so that's negative root 2 over 2. Since it's a negative root 2 and we are looking at that value anyhow, this whole value here should be negative when we find, whoops, I should have written it it's twice, all right, cosecant, here we go, 7 pi over 4 is equal to negative root 2, so, right, it's the opposite of that. All right, that is the end of the lesson. Um, Come tomorrow with any questions that you still have on this stuff. It's not quite easy, especially if you're not familiar with the unit circle, but once you do get you know, the idea down of the unit circle and how you can use symmetry and reflections, you'll be fine. All right, so uh, good job. I'll see you tomorrow.